each year, more than 12 million cars in the United States alone reach the end of their journey on the road. But instead of vanishing into junkyards, they enter one of the most extraordinary recycling systems humanity has ever built. At first glance, they are nothing more than rusted frames and broken engines. Yet inside lies a hidden mine of steel, ready to be reborn. How does a machine that once roared down highways transform into skyscrapers, bridges, and even new cars? Let's uncover the secret. In this video, we will learn how to create it. Watch until the end of the video so you don't miss any fun. Makora, from raw to remarkable. When a car reaches the end of its life, it doesn't simply disappear. The first stop is the intake area of a recycling facility. Here, technicians record every detail, vehicle identification number, year of manufacture, condition, and mileage. Photos are taken, a barcode is attached, and the data enters a digital system. This system ensures full traceability and helps determine whether the car is best suited for resale parts or direct material recovery. The numbers are astonishing. More than 95% of end-of-life vehicles in the United States pass through this system. Automobiles have become the most recycled consumer product in the world. For perspective, paper and plastic recycling rates don't even come close. But this gateway is not just about data, it's about value. An engine still capable of refurbishment may be worth thousands of dollars. Electronics, transmissions, and interior parts feed a multi-billion dollar global aftermarket. Every vehicle is evaluated with a simple question. What can still serve and what must be reborn? And once that decision is made, the journey branches. Some parts are carefully removed, tested, cleaned, and resold to extend the lives of other cars. Others are sent directly to shredders and smelters where steel, aluminum, copper, and precious metals are extracted. Nothing is left to chance. Even fluids like oil, antifreeze, and refrigerants are drained and either purified for reuse or neutralized for safe disposal. In this way, the end of one car becomes the beginning of countless other products. A silent loop of renewal that sustains industries and reduces waste on a massive scale. Before dismantling begins, hidden dangers must be disarmed. The most critical step is battery removal. Lead-acid batteries, common in gasoline cars, are taken out immediately. Their recycling rate exceeds 98% since lead, plastic casing, and even sulfuric acid can be reclaimed. They often reappear as fresh batteries powering hybrids and EVs. Lithium ion packs from electric vehicles require even more caution. These massive, high voltage units are carefully disconnected, insulated, and shipped to specialized facilities. Mishandling them could cause fires or toxic leaks. Once the car is electrically safe, it can move forward. Next comes fluid drainage. Every vehicle, even after years of use, carries several gallons of gasoline, engine oil, brake fluid, and coolant. Left inside, they're ticking bombs. Specialized probes pierce the tanks while pumps suck out every drop into sealed reservoirs. Sensors ensure no vapor escapes, reducing fire risk to zero. And again, nothing is wasted. Much of this fluid, once filtered, is reused to power forklifts and equipment inside the recycling yard itself. Yesterday's gasoline fuels today's recycling line.
Now begins systematic dismantling. Tires and wheels are removed first. Rubber tires, notoriously slow to decompose, are shredded into granules for asphalt or playground surfaces. Steel and aluminum rims go straight to smelters. Glass is next. Laminated windshields reinforced with PVB, polyvinyl, butyral, are cut out using specialized tools. Both glass and PVB are recycled, one for remelting, the other for soundproofing and coatings. Doors and interiors are dismantled with care. Frames are recycled as steel, while motors, wiring, and electronics inside are separated for copper, plastic, and rare earth magnets. Carpets and upholstery are shredded into filler materials. Engines and transmissions represent the heart of value. Some are refurbished, others broken down for aluminum, steel, and even precious metals inside catalytic converters like platinum, palladium, and rhodium. By this point, what once resembled a car is now a collection of parts with clear destinations. Nothing is wasted, nothing overlooked. Even with components removed, the vehicle frame still contains stray plastics, wiring, and bent exhaust pipes. Enter the hydraulic shear, giant jaws with clamping forces measured in tens of tons. Within minutes, stubborn parts are ripped free and the skeleton is left bare. This rough filtering ensures that what enters the crusher is almost entirely metal, safe, clean, and ready for compaction. The sight is dramatic, sparks flying as jaws snap steel beams like twigs, a reminder of just how much force is harnessed to tame what was once a machine of emotion. Yet this violence is not destruction for its own sake. It is preparation. Each shear, each spark, transforms chaos into order, stripping away impurities so that steel can be reborn with purity intact. The bare frame, once the backbone of a car, now becomes raw feedstock for furnaces and mills. In this way, the brutal jaws of the shear act as the bridge between the end of a vehicle's life and the beginning of countless other creations, ensuring nothing goes to waste. Next comes compaction. Under forces of 150 to 200 tons, a four-meter car collapses into a neat cube or thin sheet. Balers compress frames into dense cubes, perfect for stacking, transport, and furnace efficiency. A large baler can process up to 40 cars per hour. Flatteners squash cars into pancake-like sheets, quicker and cheaper, though less dense. Shear balers slice frames into short segments, skipping the baling step altogether. Each method shares one aim, turning bulky, awkward cars into manageable forms of steel. A chaotic vehicle becomes a clean, compact block, ready for the shredder. The shredder is the thunderous heart of the recycling line. Imagine interlocking steel shafts rotating in opposite directions, their teeth tearing metal apart. When a compressed car enters, the roar is deafening. Within seconds, it is reduced to uniform fragments. Throughput is staggering. Modern shredders process 100 eka 150 tons of steel per hour, equivalent to hundreds of cars a day. The speed and scale make auto recycling one of the most efficient industrial processes in existence. What emerges is no longer recognizable as a car, but rather as fragments of steel, aluminum, copper, plastics, and rubber. 
all awaiting separation. After shredding, the fragments move down conveyor belts into the sorting line. Here, science and engineering take over. Magnets pull carbon steel out first. Eddy current separators push aluminum and copper aside using magnetic fields. Airflow and vibration screens separate plastics, foams, and rubber. In less than a minute, chaos is transformed into order. Neat piles of pure steel, aluminum, copper, and secondary materials. Each pile represents revenue streams and new life cycles. Steel fragments, bundled into bales, are loaded into electric arc furnaces. Inside, graphite electrodes unleash arcs hotter than lightning. Temperatures soar above 1,600 Dürdingsies, melting scrap into glowing rivers of molten steel. Lime and flux absorb impurities, rising as slag. Oxygen lances refine the chemistry. Sophisticated sensors measure composition in real time. Within minutes, a uniform molten alloy emerges, indistinguishable from steel made with virgin iron ore, but achieved with a fraction of the energy. Each batch is logged, tested, and certified. What began as a rusting car is now a molten resource, ready to be reborn. Molten steel cannot stay liquid for long. It flows into continuous casting machines, where water-cooled copper molds solidify the surface instantly, while the core remains molten. As rollers pull the strand forward, billets, slabs, and blooms form, stretching for dozens of meters. Thermal saws cut them into segments weighing several tons each. Every piece is marked with batch data for traceability. Controlled cooling ensures a uniform grain structure. This is steel's rebirth. Formless scrap transformed into blocks of industrial potential. From casting, billets surge into hot rolling mills. Massive rollers, some meters in diameter, flatten and stretch the steel into sheets, bars, and coils. Each pass compresses the grain structure, improving strength and stability. Cameras and lasers monitor every micron of thickness. Deviations are corrected in real time. Cooling sprays and fans stabilize the steel. Ultrasonic sensors scan for hidden cracks. Mechanical tests stretch samples to their limits. Only flawless coils earn approval? The process feels almost artistic. Brute force, sculpting elegance. Chaos forged into order. And so the cycle completes. Recycled steel re-enters the world as construction beams for skyscrapers, reinforcement bars for bridges, coils and sheets for machinery and appliances, body panels for brand new cars. Every ton of recycled steel saves 74% of the energy compared to mining new ore and prevents millions of tons of CO2 emissions. It sustains a $60 billion annual industry, employing hundreds of thousands of workers worldwide. On today's global market, recycled steel typically sells for $350 to $450 per ton meaning the 12 million cars recycled each year in the United States alone represent billions of dollars in recovered value. What began as an end-of-life vehicle becomes the backbone of tomorrow's infrastructure. From highways to scrapyards, from shredders to furnaces, the journey of an old car reveals a simple truth. Steel never truly dies. It is reborn endlessly, carrying civilization forward one cycle at a time.
But here's the question. The car you drive today, could it still already contain fragments of hundreds of vehicles from the past? Tell us in the comments. And if you enjoyed this story of rebirth, hit like and subscribe to Makora, where we uncover how everything is made.